Hey, welcome to Generative Art with Flutter. Flutter is a cross-platform mobile and desktop app development framework. You can create amazing looking user interfaces with it, but I'm going to use it to draw onto the canvas and make animations. I hear that masks are in fashion these days, so I thought of creating one for myself, but on the computer screen. Here's a sneak peek into what we will create this week. Yeah, we will create this fabric simulation. Look how silky smooth it is. I will definitely wear this as a mask. Uh, the cloth animation looks complicated, but it is actually quite straightforward. I will show you how to create it step by step. Uh, we're going to be using Perlin Noise. So last week, some of you wanted me to explain uh, in detail, so I will. Uh, I'm using Flutter Canvas to create these animations. There is a bit of boilerplate setup that you have to do, but we've already done this uh, on the first video of the series. Have a look if you are interested. There are links to all the previous videos below in the description. So here's the code we have so far. I've cleaned up some of the bits from the last episode, uh, but some of these utility functions may come in handy at some point. We've set up the animation controller bits in the init state. The two functions we have to fill in are the create blob field and update update field. Update blob field. <laughs> update blob field we are using we are using custom painter to do our drawing here's what it looks like we have two parts one is to draw the particles and the other is to draw a frame around it let's go ahead and create a list of particles in the middle of the screen so this part is quite straightforward i'm going to loop through the uh, loop through and uh, create particles positioned vertically with a step very easy so here we are. We see that the circles are drawn close to the origin as we expect. Uh, let's bring them to the center of the screen. The best place to do this is on the canvas so, uh, so that our drawing algorithm looks uh, cleaner. We will create an offset and um, add it to the position of each particle. Okay, next step is to animate these particles. We will do that in steps. We simply iterate the list of particles and call set particle on each of them. The set particle looks like this. We take the original position of the particle and spread it to the height of our frame. And a bit of messing about to make it visible and centered. And now we will use Perly Noise to move the particles about. Perly Noise produces smooth random values. You can find a dense description about Perly Noise on Wikipedia. But to get an idea why we use Perly Noise and not random numbers, let's look at what Daniel Schiffman has to say. Random numbers are, as you'd expect, random and can appear anywhere in a given range. But Perlin noise gives numbers close to the previous location, so, so it looks much smoother when we animate. Um, we will use Perlin noise in our code, and it is as easy as adding a package called fast noise. There are a few functions we could use here, uh, but I'm going to use uh, this single Perlin 3 uh, that takes three parameters. The first parameter is the seed value. Um, usually people use 42 for this. I've seen this in the movies. Um, <laughs> I think it is the year Harry Potter found Gandalf, my favorite characters from Marvel Universe. Oh, I miss them. So for the rest of the parameters, you can experiment to your liking. Here are my favorite values. Perlin noise returns the same value for a given set of parameters, 
So to make it move, we have to use the t, which is ever increasing. So we compute the dx value, uh, which gives the displacement. And we simply add that to the particle's position. All right. So we have some snaky looking rope like thing in the middle now. The particles move from side to side in a very smooth manner. And we can do the same for the vertical direction. The particles are now bobbing in the vertical and horizontal directions. Marvelous! So we're going to be working on the canvas, uh, uh, on the canvas side of things, and it's a good idea to clean it up a bit. Let's create a function to draw the frame and move the code over there. Now we're going to blink this up a bit with some lines. Uh, it's as easy as calling draw line with two positions, and let's create some positions on either side of the frame and link them to the particle positions. Okay, so one side done, and let's do the same for the other side. Now we are talking. You can see that we are getting there. We have some smooth movement uh, like fabric in the wind. It's time to play with the compositing mode and um, see what it can give us. Hard light is useless, modulate is good, but XOR is better. And if you reduce the step size, we can get a very silky smooth appearance and movement. The simulator doesn't quite do the justice to the animation. So here's a screen recording uh, of the animation in real time as you would see it on an iPad. Ain't that a beauty? So that's it for this week's adventure. Like always, if you like what I create, please like and subscribe and share to support the channel. See you next time.